nonprofits are where the community goes in times of need. And when the pandemic arrived in North Carolina, nonprofits were there for us. And we need to be there for them too, as they're recovering from the impacts of COVID-19. That's really what the North Carolina Healing Communities Fund is designed to do. Many of these organizations are suffering loss of revenue. And for some, that's compounded by an increased demand for their services. And these impacts are especially felt in our most marginalized communities. We felt like with our statewide network and our experience in responding to long-term and unmet needs in times of crisis, we could do something to help, but we knew we couldn't do it alone. We would need to have partners and partners with other foundations to pool our resources together so that we could make the North Carolina Healing Communities Fund a reality. Forty percent of the kids that are living in this county are not performing at grade level. And so that was, that was a need even before the pandemic. The impact that the pandemic has had with our families, with our youth and our kids was, will be around for a while. You know, when many times we think that we're in this work by ourselves, and we know that we cannot do this work alone. And so it's just it has been amazing to know that there are other foundations that are out there who will come in and partner with us. These grants are making a real difference for these organizations. And the commitment and the generosity that the State Employees Credit Union Foundation has shown to this effort will be transformational for these organizations and for the communities that they serve. We think back to 2010, 2011. On the news, you often heard about 21st century veterans were struggling upon reintegration. That's where the, the number 22 came from, when people talk about the 22 veterans that commit suicide a day. At that point, where, where the economy was at, veterans were not, getting, were not getting jobs, and they were really having a hard time transitioning back into civil society. The SECU Veterans Residence is that solution to the challenges that 21st century veterans face. You know, being a, being a soldier, having been, you know, served, uh, we learn a lot to, you know, try and rely on yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's all about camaraderie. Everyone works together, but you still end up having this sense of uh, individuality where, you know, everything's on you. So when you get out, uh, you're not used to asking for help. You're not used to, you know, you know, being vulnerable enough to to accept or even ask for assistance in, in you know rough times so you try and do it all yourself you try and be tough um, but you know a place like this gives us the right people to be around uh, the right support uh, people that understand and can relate to that mentality and let you know that you're not there by yourself we would not have the building we have today without the generosity of the state employees credit union foundation your million dollar gift allowed us to be able to put in the courtyard. People can donate clothes to our clothing closet. They can donate books to our library. Without that million dollar gift from the State Employees Credit Union Foundation, we wouldn't have a building for those people to be able to contribute. So not only did your gift make it possible for, their, for us to exist, you've made it possible for average citizens to serve veterans in North Carolina. It's hard to measure the SCCU Foundation's gift because there are all these numbers that we can communicate. We can communicate grants secured. We can communicate cost savings. 
how do you communicate the impact of an individual who decides to go and make a place like a Husky or Wilson or Elizabeth City their home and invest and bring their time, their energy, their talent, their perspective into that place? And SECU has provided that opportunity to so many graduates across the state. Well, being from Wilson, one of the things that I was completely unsure of was what was it going to be like going home for folks who hadn't seen me since I was in high school. And one of the things I really appreciated about this program and this partnership with the city of Wilson is the red carpet was rolled out for me. When I got here, they said, find projects that you're interested in, find what you're passionate about and run with it. And I thought that made the experience so much better for me because I got to actually get on the street, talk to folks, talk to people that I had known since I was a child, and then talk to folks that were new to Wilson that um, didn't know the community as well, but really wanted to be involved. And them giving me that leeway allowed me to just go out and find what I was passionate about. It was almost um, at the end of my second year, about, um, about two thirds of the way through, I'll say, when the city manager asked if I wanted to be a part of the leadership team here in Wilson. And I said, well, I don't know how you could turn down that opportunity. Um, and in doing that, I told him one of the things that I was really passionate about was keeping Wilson in this program. It's something that I believe in. I think it's something that's good for Wilson. And in my office, it's something that I knew we could use somebody that had those kinds of skills. And so I just want to say thanks to the SECU Foundation for being willing to contribute to this program and to be willing to invest in it so much. I mean, the Dean of the School of Government, he's told everyone that when this project first was thought of and coming into fruition, they didn't know that it would ever have a chance. But because they were willing to buy into the program and give people opportunities, it is flourishing and our state is all the better for it.